Dean here from WP Elevation and welcome to another live stream. Of course, we are live streaming all week this week about uh, being your own boss, working from home, winning clients from home and uh, running a successful business from home. And I'm super, super, super excited to have a very special guest with me uh, today. I'm very excited about this. Of course, our uh, special guest today is my good friend, Noah Britton, all the way from Seattle in Washington State in the USA. And if I push this button right here now, we should be able to see you on the screen. Noah Britton, how are you, my friend? Hey, y'all. Good, Troy. Doing great, man. It's really cloudy today, but I'm happy to, to see all y'all. Dude, I've got to talk about the elephant in the room, man. Your office there is amazing. Look, look at your view. How do you... Like, I thought you worked from home, bro. What's going on? You know, the, the overhead's killing me here. It's like $15,000 a month. It's at the Amazon headquarters. And I don't even know how clients afford me. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's reveal the truth. What actually is going on there? How are you doing that, man? I don't even know what's going on. Let's see here. Uh, I can go to my boss's, Boston office here. There we go. That's actually still in, that's still in Seattle, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's more like what it's really like. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So you've clearly, you've clearly got a, uh, a, uh, a green screen there behind you and you're uh, overlaying some backgrounds, which is awesome. Um, I do also, oh wow, I've just brought up a fancy, fancy overlay of us talking together, a split screen here on Skype. Hey, hey for those that don't know, uh, first of all, if you are uh, watching this live on ye old Facebook, uh, let us know in the comments, which country are you from? I just want to get uh, an affirmative that this is all working. You can hear us and you can see us okay. Just let us know in the comments which country you are from so that I know where you guys are. I'm seeing some very familiar names here on the call. Uh, Georgia Butterfield. Awesome. Hey, Georgia was on the call yesterday. Roger Matthews is here. He's been following along this week. Uh, Heidi Jess, Tom Taggart, Vern Clinton, Beth Livingston, uh, David Castillo, uh, Sue Shea, Mark Conger, Jeff Summers, Simon Kelly, Hans Thompson, uh, uh, Louis Basto, Monte Cristo, Thunder from Down Under, he's in Australia. Loet Gal is here from the UK. Chad Sultana is here from Australia. Uh, here we go. We've got uh, Adnan Pothiawala, I hope I'm saying your name right, from India. Hans from the, from the US. Nick, uh, Nick Coupland from Australia. Uh, Tom is from Texas. Cool, cool. Super engaged uh, audience. You guys are great. Sheila Hurd is here from Canada. Now, for those that don't know and who, who uh, might not be familiar with you, Noah, who are you? What do you do? And what are you doing on this live stream? Yeah, so I live in Seattle. I own a web agency and we build design, brand and market websites, home based business. All of my team is remote. And yeah, I've been a fan of yours for years. And yeah, I'm here just to talk about how I'm successful from the comforts of my home. Awesome. Um, the big question on everyone's lips is, are you wearing pants? Sweatpants. I'm wearing very comfortable sweatpants. I, the other day I had an intake, a strategy call with a client and I was late for it. I had one minute to get there and I did the whole thing in my underwear. And I actually never done that before, but it was the bottom half was underwear and I had my Thrive branded t-shirt on it. True story. I've only, I've only done that once in my life. Love it. Um, now we were talking, uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were kind of teeing this up and just want to give a big shout out to people watching here. Tina Hughes is here from Pandanus Beach in, uh, Queensland in Brisbane. Omar D'Elia from Houston. Jason Sylvester from the US. Uh, Mark Conger says, I can't see or hear anything. Has it started yet? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Just give us a heads up. Uh, if you can see us and hear us, just say yay in the comments. If you can hear and see. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, Mark Conger just refreshed and it's all good. Um, and, uh, and by the way, just also wanted to give you guys a, a, a heads up that if you comment with the word live, if you just add the word live into the comments, you will get a notification via Facebook Messenger when we go live this week. We're going live every day this week, helping you guys to, uh, to get clients from home. So if you just drop the word live in the comments now, you will get notified when we go live via the wonderful workings of uh, Facebook Messenger. So to make sure you don't miss out. Now, Noah, we were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago about this and you revealed to me that you haven't actually met one of your client, any of your clients in, in fact, you met one prospect in the last two years in real life. Talk, talk to us about yep. that. Yeah, that one actually didn't convert. I spent all the time to drive, 
uh, down to her office. She's an architect. I live in Seattle. Traffic here is one of the worst in the nation. Really? And I actually been in business for a really long time. Well, it's 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 top five. We just have terrible infrastructure. We've grown so quickly. Amazon's here. It's totally nuts. Uh, I'm agoraphobic anyway. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not actually, but I just, I, I don't need to see anybody. I, I can see their faces and it's really not about pitching to people anymore. I don't need to go to someone and, and position myself in person. And a lot of times people, they can't meet in person either. They're very busy and they're remote, their team's remote, especially now. I mean, I've already been doing this now for two years, but especially now everybody's remote and there's no difference for me right now. And I'm busier than I ever have been in part because I haven't had to do any pivoting at all for this. Um, so a couple of questions that come up when we talk about getting clients from home. Uh, one of the things that is big in the kind of entrepreneurial space, and most of our audience are either freelancers or small business owners. And a lot of us have kind of ended up in business by accident. Oh, excuse me, phone is ringing there. Let me just deal with that. Oh, I think I owe someone a uh, slab of beer now that the phone's gone off halfway through a uh, presentation. Um, um, the, the, one of the things that we deal with is because most, a lot of us have ended up in business by accident, right? So we kind of have these skills, we put ourselves out there, we do some work, and then all of a sudden clients start paying us for our, our work, and we've ended up in business um, by accident. And one of the things that we feel is imposter syndrome, and especially working from home, we feel like we need to have an office and we need to appear bigger than we actually are in order to land those clients. And I know you've experienced this over the years. Just talk to me a little bit about some of the things you've done to kind of coach yourself through that. Yeah, imposter syndrome, that is, uh, that's, that's a rough one to deal with. I dealt with it for many years. Uh, eventually, I just listened to my coaches and I did have to gain some skills along the ways, but I just realized that I'm here to help people. I'm here to add value and I'm going to resonate with some people and some people I'm not. And so just putting myself out there, uh, one of the things I've done recently is I actually have an opinion and create content. I create content to position myself as someone who has an opinion in certain matters. And that's through a YouTube channel, through a blog, that's one thing where I don't actually need to be there in person. Um, the imposter syndrome is, you know what, not everything's going to be a home run. Um, things are going to be awkward. This video is going to be awkward. I mean, just talking in general to people. Uh, for me, has has been a pretty terrifying experience for most of my professional life, but I just keep on doing it. It's a muscle, right? It's a muscle that I'm building: anxiety tolerance, nervousness tolerance. It's just a muscle I'm building, uh, and it's just onwards. It just it just keep doing it. Um, something that I, I just want to unpack there for a minute because I've heard a lot of people talk about this is that it's it's ultimately it's not about you; it's about the people that you're serving. So, if you can remind yourself that if I'm feeling a bit awkward talking to people, or I'm feeling like if I put myself out there, if I make a video and stick it up on YouTube, which you've been doing a lot of lately and you've been getting some great growth on your YouTube channel, that you might feel like you're an imposter or that someone might criticize you, but it's actually not about you. It's about the audience that you're serving. And if one person finds that piece of content helpful, then we've had a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what happens when you start to communicate with a client and uh, you want to position yourself as a service provider that can help them and can get paid well to help them. What are some of the tactical and practical things that you do when you start communicating with that client to kind of just combat the fact that you're working from home and make that a non-issue? Yeah, it, for me, it's my process that I've just been defining over, over iterating on. And I have a very set process I take clients through. So when somebody calls me, I know exactly the kind of questions I'm going to ask ahead of time. I It's not 100% a script, but I know the questions. I know that I'm going to send them a bonjoro when they first call, like email me. I'm going to connect with them on LinkedIn. I have a step process. I take people through this journey that eventually in the, within the first like one hour, I already have them uh, as a strategy call. I'm selling them a strategy call to actually get deeper into what they need as a business, or I've identified them as they fit within this package. So having a package is something I deliver to clients predictably for a certain price. I'm either telling them about that package or I'm saying, Hey, you know, we'd actually need to have a, a deeper conversation. And that's a strategy session that I charge for. So I just have a process I take people through and that makes it a lot easier because I can repeat it the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, maybe 30% of people are going to be a fit and that's totally okay. Yeah. 
How do you deal with, um, you know, obviously we need work and we're especially, uh, you know, when we're starting out, we're a small business, we're a freelancer, we need to pay the bills, we need to eat. How do you deal with clients who, who come into your ecosystem and then don't want to play by your rules? They don't want to follow your process. They don't want to go through a discovery session. They just want to give you orders and they want you to basically just react and respond to their demands. Yeah. First thing is my website, which is how most people find out about me. I write content that's going to repel people that aren't a good match for me. I literally say we're not an extra set of hands uh, on, on our, on my website. And it, it, it's from the very beginning of all the things that I write, all the things that I talk about are positioning in a way that I'm not a good match for everyone. And I rate, and actually I learned this through WP elevation through one of your programs. I rate all of my prospects on a scale to one to 15 based on how good their budget is. That's zero through five, how good of a fit they are as far as their project and then how much they respect my process. And so if anybody makes a 12 or above on that scale out of 15, they're going to be a, a fit for me. Maybe their budget is not perfect, but I really like their project and they really respect my process. If somebody's looking for an extra set of hands, I'm not that guy. Like, I don't want that work. Um, because it's yeah. ultimately just time for money, that 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 mm -hmm. work, isn't it? And, and that's not mm -hmm. something that you can scale and it's not something that's ultimately profitable. I think one of the things that people struggle with is – realizing that sometimes when you take on a client or a project that say, you know, I'm just going to make up some numbers here, but if you take on like a $3,000 project that takes six weeks to deliver, there's no profit in that project. So you might've made $3,000 in revenue, but ultimately it's going to slow down the business and hurt you and actually cost you money to deliver that project for that price point. I know you've said no to I know you've said no to clients in the past because they haven't been a good fit and I know that sometimes it's a hard decision to make isn't it Yeah well especially earlier on until I really saw that by saying no and working with clients that basically aren't nickel and dime me and are actually respecting my process they're more successful these products are way more successful my team's happier there's actually better margin on those and I just need a couple of those. I mean, I would take two good projects versus 10 of these. Like the numbers are just crazy different. And it's the time difference is so until I actually did it, until I actually got really, really good at saying no. And in a way that's not like I'm not being mean. It's just like, you know, this just isn't a good fit for us. You can either fit in this product here or we have a thousand dollar strategy workshop you can go through and just not taking it personally. I had a hard time with that too. Like yeah. uh, if a client, didn't want to go with my process, I would take it personally. And now it's like, nope, I want to help pe help people that want to be helped uh, and trust experts. And I try to do that myself. I try to, tr if I'm going to hire a, pl hire a plumber, I'm going to hire an expert to do the plumbing work. I'm not going to hire like, That's I'm right. going to try to do it myself. So. That's right. Well, you're not going to hire yeah. a plumber and then micromanage him when he turns up and tell him how, how to do his job. Um, no. Beth Livingston, I just brought your comment up on the screen. It says, oh, it's like credit scoring for clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes the bank will say no if you haven't got a good credit score. Uh, I love this too. Mark Conga says, uh, sell your brain, not your brawn. Sell your yeah. brain, not your brawn. Love it. Um, so let me let me just get into a little bit of the, I want to get a little bit more into the, the tactics here. What's the process when someone kind of comes across some of your content or they see you on YouTube or, or they, you know, uh, notice a comment in a Facebook group, which by the way, I think Facebook groups and being super helpful in Facebook groups is one of the easiest and fastest way to build trust, build relationships and get new clients. And I know that you do this. When someone first comes across your content and they, and they reach out to you and uh, they want to engage with you, what's the first thing, what's the first touch point that's, that you use to start to position yourself as an expert, not just, not just hired help? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, usually if somebody emails me, I'll read their email, I'll send them off um, a, a video that says, here's the process that we have at Thrive. Uh, please schedule an intake call with me. I'll show you the next steps. It's really simple. It's, just, it's a quick little email template that I have put together that um, 
shows them there's two videos I really want clients to see before they even think about paying me any money. And so I have these ready to go in an in a email format. And then even just having a Calendly link that says schedule your 15 minute call with me here, that in itself is a positioning piece that, hey, I'm just not some guy that you, that you call up randomly, like schedule an appointment here and we'll, we'll get into uh, what you need as for a project. And then the actual calendar invite actually has a script that says, here's what we're gonna be discussing. It has an agenda. I mean, I just, I position myself as really organized because I actually mm. am, I'm a very organized person, but ha letting them know from the very beginning, I have a process and mm. you're gonna be taken care of and I'm gonna take you through this entire thing step by step. At the end of the day, that's what they want. I mean, the clients that I wanna serve are the ones that wanna be taken through a process and be shown how it to be done. Not, not I'm, not, I'm not an order taker. Um, I used to be, but I'm just, I'm not that anymore. I have a, I have a process. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge distinction that without a, process you are just an order taker and mm -hmm. uh the the you, you said something interesting like i'm not just here waiting for you to contact me and give me your instructions and that's the difference between in australia we have like your your, your family doctor's called a general practitioner right a gp so they're just like a a general medical practitioner they know a little bit about a lot of stuff and you can generally i can call up my gp and probably get in this afternoon to go see them and just have a general chat about something that's going on but if I want to go and see a specialist, and you know, I pay a certain amount to see my GP. If I want to go and see a specialist, usually what happens is I need a referral from my GP. I can't just call up a specialist and make an appointment. I've got to be referred by my GP. There's going to be probably a two week yeah. period before I can get in to see the specialist because they're super busy. And guess what? It's going to cost me probably three or four times more to see a specialist than it is the GP because they've spent the years specializing in their particular field and they're not just available for you to make an appointment there is a process that you have to go through and they control that process now no one agreed to this process it was just something that the medical profession came up with it's a business model that works for them they decided that it works for them they own the process and as consumers we just have to fall into that process and being transparent about it. Like I have a 10 minute video that takes people through for the 44 steps from the very first phone call to when a project is completed. And I've had prospects say that just seeing the first 30 seconds of that video put them over the top to contact me. I put it on my website, I put it on my YouTube channel. I have another one that talks about the nine different components of a successful project. They're just positioning pieces and there's no reason to hide that from my users. I mean, there's no I mean, I'm the wizard behind the curtain, but there's no curtain. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I have a process and it just, it instills confidence internally. Like I know I have a process. I'm not, you know, there's no guessing here. Um, but I had to get very narrow on, you know, who I serve and the kind of products that I offer. Yeah. Kyle, Peter, Alexander, who's watching says, without a process, you are an order taker. Exactly. Uh, a couple of interruptions to the live stream for Georgia and Mark. Just refresh Facebook gang and you should be uh, back in. Uh, we do want to take some questions uh, soon, uh, but I just want to dig into uh, a little bit more of Noah's kind of mindset here. Talk to me about, this is a bit of a curveball, talk to me about pricing, my friend. Talk to me about the mental challenges that you have when you start to talk to clients about how to price your services. This is I off script, by the way. I haven't, I haven't, it, I haven't warned Noah about any of these questions. So this is totally off script. Well, I actually didn't actually, I didn't figure this out until about three months ago. Uh, we were in San Diego at Mavericks talking about having a predictable product, a product with a fixed scope and a fixed price. And I didn't, I didn't have one. You know, we build websites, but mine were always bespoke. I'm always custom quoting. It was like. I was just, I was burnt out on creating proposals for clients that just, that just were shopping around. And so I figured out an actual fixed product for scope and pricing. And so I, right now it's very simple. Like either people are going to go into that product or they're going to, you know, I'm going to charge them a thousand dollars for a strategy workshop where we're going to figure out what needs to get done. So before I had that like model, it was stressful and all over the place and the mindset around, you know, what am I actually going to charge when they all are bespoke? Um, you know, there's, there's, there are ideas about value-based pricing. Um, 
I don't even know what it was like. It was just so stressful. I'm having like PTSD from having all these conversations around around price with with clients. But I always knew I, I, there was a range. There's a range for the different types of products we had. When I'm in conversations, I always know if it's an e-commerce site, it's going to be this range. If it's a brochure type website, it's going to be this range. And I just have to figure out what is really it worth. What is it worth to them as far as what value is it going to bring to them as far as the pricing goes? Uh, if I answer that, is that, does that make sense, Troy? Is there anything I'm, uh, you want to dig deeper on that one? Um, one thing, one thing I learned years ago, and I think this is just a line that I want to share with people, uh, when you get objections around pricing, which you will, people will object to pricing or they'll say, this is all I've got. This is the budget that I've got. One line I heard years ago from a, uh, uh, an app development company that we were partnering with is, uh, the, the, the guy said, that just doesn't sound like enough money to do what you want to do properly. And I love that line because what it, it, what it intimates and what it suggests is you could probably do what you're wanting to do for that money, but it just won't be done very well. It won't be very good. So if you want to do what you want to do and you want us to help you and you want it to be really good quality, we just can't do it with that budget. And that just diffuses anything personal out of the conversation. It just makes it completely objective. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat that line. That just doesn't sound like enough money to do what you want to do properly. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention the word goals. I'll say for the goals you're looking to achieve, you need a budget that's going to match that and you just don't have that right now. So we can yeah. chunk this up into different phases and accomplish just some of these goals. But based on my experience in projects like this, you're going to need a larger budget. Yeah. And just, again, without attachment, without like judgment, it's just making it flat and then going silent, of course, right? Like making that statement in kind of a lower, like slower tone, going silent and just yeah, like see what happens. Yeah. Silence is, silence is golden, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> silence is golden. Um, ben Monk says, everything bespoke. I feel your pain. So, so why, why is, for anyone who's, who's dealing, anyone who's providing a service for a client, this is why I'm such a, such a fan of productizing services, but for anyone who's providing a service for a client, talk to us about why bespoke services are so painful. Why are bespoke services painful? Well, clients come into a conversation thinking they need something, they're self-diagnosing, um, and I have to get into a conversation with them to actually figure out what they really need and then write a proposal that somehow captures all of that, maybe in like one hour conversation, two hour conversation. It just, it just doesn't work very well. Uh, it, it to actually understand what somebody needs, we really have to go deep into conversation. And we use the go wide, go deep method. I learned that one also through WP Elevation, going very deep on their goals, the deep into the why of their project. But still, we have to create a solution that matches their particular situation. And it could be all over the place. There could be things we don't know about. A lot of times I'll get in a conversation and they're hiding stuff, maybe even subconsciously, that needs to be known in order to actually create a solution. So it, it could be, I, I actually, I, 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 pr I got pretty frustrated. I, I think we talked about this in February about clients will come in and they'll want a bid from five different companies. They'll have these shallow little conversations about what's needed. Everybody will give these different solutions, different price points. Somebody goes down, looks at those five proposals and just points usually at the lowest one. And the projects aren't very successful. So I actually ed educate my, my prospects about this. And I say, look, find a company that you match well with. Go deep with them. It doesn't matter if it's me or not. Just go deep with them mm -hmm. to figure out what needs to get done before you put a price on it. Yeah. Uh, but bespoke, yeah, kind of the bane of my existence. And that's why you know I was so excited to put together the Ahoy packages for those predictable products. Yeah. Um, it, it reminds me, uh, Zig Ziglar had a great quote. It's better to be a, a meaningful specific than a wandering generality. And I think when you do bespoke services, you end up by osmosis just being a wandering generality because a client comes in and says, can you do this? And because you need the work, you say yes, and then you scramble and figure out how to do it, or you outsource some of it to another freelancer, or you partner with someone else to do it. Your profit goes straight out the window. You learn some new skills, but it's not really profitable at the end of the day. Uh, and yeah. if you are a, if you're more specific in the problems that you solve, 
you generally attract the right clients, repel the clients that aren't right for you, which is actually a good thing. And you get paid more because you become really good at what it is you do rather than just doing, you know, like the general practitioner analogy, rather than just doing a little bit of everything, you become really good at a specific thing. I love e-commerce, right? It just turns out I'm really bad at it because there are so many moving parts and so many variables with e-commerce that I decided years ago to just opt out of the whole e-commerce thing because it just caused me too many headaches. So I, you know, and, and it was a big decision. I remember it was a big decision to say, I'm just not going to take on any more e-commerce projects because they're just too painful and I'm, I just don't have the patience to actually become really good at it. So therefore I'm going to opt out of it. And I instead became really good at conversion rate optimization, particularly for nonprofits and charities. And that was my sweet spot. That was the thing that I specialized in. Uh, a couple of questions here I want to address. Um, uh, do, 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 and I'm just going to, so I do want to, I do want to open up some questions. And by the way, if you do want to get notified about when we go live, I'll just bring that up on the screen again, drop the word live in the comments to get notified when we go live. Uh, so that when we, we're going live every day this week. Um, and so if you want to get notified by Facebook messengers, just drop the word live in the comments, uh, and we'll notify you via Facebook messenger. Um, I do want to open up for some questions. So if you've got any questions for myself or Noah, about how to win clients from home and how to convert them into you know decent clients, uh, then uh, now is a good time. There's a question here. I just want to scroll back in the comments a little bit and bring this up. Here we go. Adnan Pothiawala. I hope I'm saying your name right, Adnan. Uh, so I'm just going to throw some curveballs here uh, at both of us. What techniques do you follow to get leads? Is probably the number one question that people have. What techniques do you follow to get leads? Well, you just pull up my lead generation spreadsheet. I have uh, 13 different ways that we generate leads. The number one source of our leads come from our organic yeah. SEO. So I I pay so for somebody to do SEO. SEO for, for my particular industry is one of the hardest ones to do. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, and we, you know, we get eight leads, eight quality leads per month through organic. I also do some sponsorships with Clutch, UpCity. I do some Facebook ads. What's I even Clutch? do cold email. What's Clutch? What's that? Oh, Clutch. So it's like a review website of oh, yeah. different services, and you basically pay 150 bucks, and you get listed. Uh, it's a directory service for for web designers. Got it. Uh, and then content, right? So creating content, the YouTube channel, Facebook engagement, and then a big one for me, for my particular uh, industry, is agency partnerships. So I have partnerships with all types of uh, like copywriters, photographers, SEO specialists people that are my power partners that can refer business to me who know me, right? These aren't just random people. Like I have about 10, 10, 15 people that are my, my real good power partners and I refer business to them. They refer business to me. And those are always the highest converting uh, types of leads. And I would say usually the best clients as well. Like they have buyer intent, they respect a the process. Um, yeah, I get, I get at least, at least five of those kind of leads uh, per month. Uh, and really let, let, let's just park here for a second. This is so. First of all, I love the fact that you have a lead generation spreadsheet. <laughs> I love that. Uh, um, uh, let's just talk about referrals for a second. The thing about referrals is we know that in order for someone to buy from us, the old adage is they need to know, like, and trust us, right? The thing about referrals is that the trust is already kind of inherent and built into the relationship. If, if I have a great relationship with someone who really trusts me and they're like, hey, you know what? I'm on the northwest coast of the States and I just need a website and I need someone who really understands what they're doing and really cares about return on investment and really wants to help me succeed, I would say, you know what? Go and see my friend Noah Britton at Thrive Digital. Now, if that person goes to talk to you, they already on some level trust that you're going to do a good job because I've put my word on the line. That's why referrals, I think, are such a great source of, uh, of leads. Um, well, and I, and I have a, I have a whole page, I thrive dot design slash referral. I have a whole page that talks about my referral program too. It's actually a structured thing. I pay out 10%. And when I refer people to my photographer, she pays me 10%. And it's because we actually spend time qualifying those leads. I, I won't just send anybody to my photographer. It has to be someone I know who has a budget. I like their personality. I know they're going to be a good fit. And I just do a nice warm intro via email. And I know they're going to be successful with Holly. Holly is an amazing photographer. I mean, everybody wins in this situation. And, and that's about being of service as well. Totally. 
Uh, another question here from Nicole. Uh, the question is, Noah, do you feel like YouTube or blog posts get you better results? Me personally, YouTube, because I just feel more comfortable in front of a camera. And actually, I'm not even writing my own blog post. So so it, it's not 100% authentically, authentically me, whereas my videos are 100% me. So uh, the engagement I'm getting, the positioning, I mean, certainly I send a video to a client. If it's a three minute video that explains a concept, they see my face, they see me that I'm a real person. I mean, if we are working from home and we want to create a connection with people, video is it. I mean, creating totally. the Bonjoro videos or just a quick loom video, yeah. anything with our face, where we're talking, people see that we're real. That's the first thing I want to do is, is I want to get on a video as soon as possible with a client which also allows me to see what they're like. I mean, yeah. again, only 30% of clients I talk to end up I are even a good fit for me. So I needed to, to suss that out as soon as possible. Definitely. Uh, quick question here from Sheila, which is a little bit off topic, but the question from Sheila Heard is, what software is this magic sorcery? I do believe she is talking about the software that we are using to produce this live stream. Sheila, it is Ecamm Live. E-C-A-M-M, -M, Ecamm Live is the software that we are using to produce uh, the live stream here. Mark Conga has a great question. Are you charging monthly maintenance or do you do the site and hand it off to the client? Yeah, I, I recurring revenue uh, kept me really going during uh, the COVID pandemic. And I have a care plan and hosting maintenance package I have for all of my clients. It's a core part of my business. I don't want to build a website and then just go away. I want a long-term relationship. I want to see clients grow and help them succeed. And I let them know that from the very beginning. I'm not just the guy that comes in, builds a website, that hands it off. The recurring revenue that comes from care plans and hosting and those kind of things, it's it's the margins on it are great. You, you make sure they're protected. They feel secure. They know they can call me. And I will not work with a client unless they have a care plan. I'm not the ad hoc guy. That's another thing too, right? Yeah. Like uh, I say the word guy. So I'm not the ad hoc person. I'm not the uh, extra set of hands person. Uh, I'm, I'm being hired for my expertise and I position myself as that. They're hiring me to tell them what really needs to happen within their business when it comes to online stuff. Uh, digital experiences and, and marketing and branding. If they weren't, then we shouldn't be talking. Like if they don't need my expertise, they shouldn't be calling me. Um, and, I, and I hope that everybody can position themselves in their particular sweet spot. Like I don't, I'm not an expert at Shopify. I won't talk about Shopify or Squarespace. I won't talk about things that aren't in my lane because it won't be authentic and, and I feel like I don't feel good about it. Totally. And you end up just digging yourself into a hole, don't you? If you, if you, kind of pretend to know a little bit about it. Uh, interesting question. I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Mark Conger says, do you also set up and manage email hosting for the client's domain if it's new for the client? Not for as much money in the world. Uh, and I would never do it. I would never, I'd never host the email myself, obviously. But, no. you know, I for select clients, I will set up their Google Suite account. It seems like kind of like... Um, an extra set of hands kind of a thing, but I, it's pretty simple. I create their first account and then create a Loom video that says, I've set you up, here's how to add new users, Google is your support, here's, add, add, here's how to add your credit card. So part of the positioning of working from home is having these little tutorial videos for clients that shows them how to do things. And they're yeah. so simple to do, it just takes practice. It's just a muscle, again, talking in front of a camera. I. I thought I was going to throw up earlier on this call, and I, I seem to have recovered. But you know, it, it's just getting used to the totally. use your, using your muscle and talking. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I'm working from home at the moment, as you know, as, as we all are. I've got uh, my wife and a little boy who's almost three, and a newborn who is four and a half weeks old out in the the other room out there. And I was walking around at a quarter to the hour, fifteen minutes before we're due to go live here, and I was like tetchy and I'm edgy and I'm bouncing up and down and I'm like telling the family to be quiet because dad's about to go live and 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 Amy's like you know my wife's like oh good luck have fun you know keep keep calm you know um, and it is it's just it's just uh it's just a muscle that you need to flex um Omar says Noah is a natural in front of the camera he has awesome videos uh and Bashir so while we're here let's just park here Bashir Padana says how do we get over the fear of facing camera how do you get over the fear of getting on camera 
All right. So I actually have a PhD in anxiety. Um, I, <laughs> it, it's really like fear of anything else. It's building up tolerance, doing it for me, me at least it was doing it in these, in these micro steps, just keep, but keeping at it. It's just like public speaking, start with your family, then start with a group of five people, um, start with Toastmasters. Um, it's, it's, um, everything is a muscle and the more we do it, the more resilience we have. Um, that's all, that's all I can say. I mean, for, for, I mean, that's, that's all it is for me is, it's just, it's just repeating going over and over. over. Nobody was born a basketball star. Yeah. So they get good at basketball because they play basketball every day and they take the shots. That's right. So just keep taking the shots. Exactly. Um, question here from Nicole. A couple of people have got this question actually. How can we get the lead generation spreadsheet? Well, truthfully, we didn't actually have that lined up. Uh, maybe people can reach out to Noah if he's happy to share it. Uh, Thrive Digital. I'm sure if you search Noah Britain at Thrive Digital, reach out via email or Twitter. I'm, uh, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll look after you. But I'll tell you what is coming up, and I do just want to preview Thrive this. Design, Troy. I got I got Thrive Design. Thrive Design. So it's a Thri it's my it's my other brand, Ahoy Digital. That's a good I point. I have Ahoy Digital. And I have Thrive Design. Yeah, I'm happy to share the spreadsheet. Uh, cool. It just shows. Actually, I actually have, have a video on my YouTube channel. I'll share out the YouTube video. Perfect. Uh, so is it thrive.design? Is that your URL? Perfect. Thrive.design and ahoy.digital. Awesome. Um, I do want to preview this, though, because tomorrow we are giving away a spreadsheet. We've got a live stream coming up tomorrow. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what the spreadsheet is, but the title of the live training is How Can This Spreadsheet help you run a successful business from home. It's not the lead gen spreadsheet. It is a different spreadsheet. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You're gonna to have to turn up to the live training. I'm gonna walk you through how to use the spreadsheet. And I'm also going to give you a copy of the spreadsheet if you turn up. So that is tomorrow, the same time as today. Those times are there on the screen. Uh, and if you, again, if you do wanna get notified of when we go live, then all you need to do is add the word live into the comments here and we will notify you via ye old Facebook Messenger uh, that uh, that we are going live. And for some reason, the the old uh, live notification lower third there isn't working on the screen. Um, all right, let's bounce back to uh, a couple more questions here. Um, do 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 do. Here we go. Just scrolling through. <clears throat> Brett Drinkwater says, "Ecam live only for Mac." Yes, it is. Sorry, Brett. Um, you can solve most problems in life by moving from PC to Mac. Um, <laughs> uh, Georgia Butterfield says, Noah, do you or your team manage your own servers or do you resell hosting from your hosting provider? Yeah, we resell Kinsta. Kinsta is <clears throat> awesome managed WordPress hosting. Uh, I've used everyone under the, under the sun. Just go with managed hosting. WP Engine, Flywheel, Pantheon, Kinsta. Just take care of that part of it. It'll save you so much time and headache. Don't mess around with cPanel or Plast. That's from my own experience. I just let them handle all that kind of stuff. And it's a premium, but it's so worth it. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, Beth Livingston says something interesting here. Nobody is judging you on video the way you think. Do you judge others that harshly? It's a good question. Um, Matt Olson wants to know, why two brands? Why do you have Ahoy Digital yeah. and Thrive Design? Yeah, so Ahoy came out of my, my knowing that I needed a, a lower end predictable product, a fixed product. And I basically don't advertise it. People come to me as Thrive. And then if I know they fit into this particular product, I actually, uh, I, I, I struggled back and forth. Am I going to have this as its own entity or as Thrive? I, I just went with Ahoy and it's pirate themed. I mean, it's a pirate themed product. I think the Facebook advertising works better for that. Uh, it's, it's a lighter, it's a totally different style. Um, but yeah, there can be obviously some confusion there. So, it, and it's, it's early on, I may fold it back into Thrive. Uh, awesome, drop the word live in the comments to get notified of when we go live. A bunch of people asking when we're going live next. So drop the word live into the comments here and we will ping you via Facebook Messenger and let you know when we are going live. Jenny Lackanen is PC forever. I'm happy for you, Jenny. Um, I make no no apologies for the fact that I love Apple products, and uh, but if it works on a PC, then knock yourself out. Um, is the process of adding zeros to the end of quotes just a matter of courage? This is a great question. Is the process of adding zeros to the end of quotes 
just a matter of courage from Alex Hoare. Uh, Noah, walk us, walk us through right. that. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah. No, that's that's. it's a great question. There was an evolution in my own company where I realized I actually needed to also deliver more. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily more, but um, the particular staff I had at the time three years ago, it just needed to be upgraded. I, didn't act, I wasn't actually delivering on major promises, and I wasn't actually uh, distinguishing what needed to be done with clients. That one of the biggest issues in my company before was we weren't doing proper discovery. We weren't actually digging into the why, and we were uh, not doing the diagnosis before we were prescribing the right solution. So I'm very keen on, that's one of my mantras, is I will not prescribe without diagnosis. And so once I did that, once I now understand what, what really needs to happen if I have those conversations, I can add that zero. And I'm trying to think, do I actually add zeros these days? Uh, Troy, I don't think I've added a zero. I don't, I mean, we talked, after going through WP Elevation, I tripled my prices. That's not adding a zero. But I tell you, pretty much anybody that will triple their prices are going to be happy with what, uh, with what the end result is. Um, yeah. I certainly am. Yeah. Um, uh, a couple of a uh, couple of things here. Um, Matt Vinu says, going back to care plans, are your care plans a different agreement after you deliver on a project? Now I bake them right into the proposal. Yeah, yeah, it it, so, it lays it out. And I have a on thrive.design, just go to on the footer, click on care plans. I list out every single thing that it includes. Like I'm very big on transparency and actually defining what something includes. And something like a care plan is a fixed asset. It's a predictable product. And defining it, there's no there's no pain in there. It's the same for everyone. And if they fit, they fit. And if they don't, it's all good too. That's the thing. If they don't fit into a particular product, you don't have to make it bespoke. Mm. I mean, you could and charge them a ton, sure. I mean, that's typically what I do is if it's bespoke, I go through discovery process and I charge them a bunch because it is a real custom solution that requires a custom price. Totally. Um, hey, if you're watching this and you know someone who might benefit from watching this and tuning in, please share this live stream with some friends, either tag them in or just share it for us in any groups or on your profile, because uh, we'd just love to get this message out to as many people as possible. Noah, talk to me about working from home and the impact that that has on your lifestyle. <sighs> I mean, I, have a, I, I actually have a, a view of like, trees i mean it's it's peaceful um i have i mean my lifestyle i've been able to really slow things down and choose my environment i mean i'm very big on how i spend my time and who i spend it with and that just gives me control um not not just who i work with but the space that i'm in and it's just very comfortable it's very comfortable here and i'm not i mean there are some uh, traps people can get into when they work from home, where they get distracted by all the things that are at home and all the chores. I mean, I I can tell the I can tell when I really don't want to do a particular task if I'm washing the dishes in the middle of the day. That's like totally. my go-to, you know. So I have to be very mindful of that. But I would I would not change this for the world. I mean, I, I've worked from from all around the world. Like, well, I travel. Like I'll go on long vacations, and then for three or four of those days, I'm working during that that time. And that, I mean, I'm making money as I'm actually on vacation as well. So that has made a huge difference for me. Um, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. It's um, I've been working out of an office for the last sort of four or five years. When the pandemic hit, I was forced to come and work from home again. Fortunately, we just moved house before the pandemic hit. So we're in a beautiful house and I've got a great home office studio set up. And we have a new baby who's, as I said, just over four weeks old. And I have a, a little boy who's almost three. And I realised how much I was missing out on by being at the office full time. Now the restrictions are starting to relax here a little bit in Australia I'm in no rush to go back to the office at all. And I am absolutely loving working from home and just finish, I'll finish this live stream. I'll walk out there. I'll spend some time with Oscar and, and my wife, Amy, and our little daughter, Goldie. Um, and in the middle of the day, I'll go and have lunch out on the back deck and watch Oscar jump up and down on the trampoline. And I'm like, man, I'm in paradise, dude. 
this is like yeah those, I, I, played, those I played dolls i played dolls i played dolls for an hour today i played dolls yeah. with roxy she's she's seven years old i was in the backyard hanging yeah. out uh, having lunch with my wife i mean it's uh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay, Noah, to play dolls. You don't. You don't have to tell us that you play dolls with the kids, man. It's okay, dude. I love playing. It's dolls. okay if you want to play dolls on your All own, man. It's stories. totally fine. All these stories we get into, we get into no, shenanigans. Roxy and I, with, we have an adventure. Nothing wrong with playing dolls, adventure. even if the kids aren't around, man. Um, yeah. Hey, this is a good question from David Blackman, right? Uh, yeah, Jenny Lackanen says working from home with little kids is the best. Is love, love, love. Um, uh, in fact, I'm just going to bring that up. These lower thirds are just going a little bit crazy here. I'm going to bring that up from Jenny Lacken. And working from home with the little kids is love, 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 totally. David Blackman says, this is a really interesting question. How much of your business is local, national, or international? All right. Uh, so I'm such a nerd. Uh, I'll tell you that <laughs> 84% of my customers are in Washington State. And the other 16% are in the United States. Right. Uh, I think it's about only two in California, but almost all of us, almost all of them are in Washington state, which is strange, but that's how they find me. They find me through local SEO. They find me through, um, yeah, just local engagement on community boards and referrals from other agencies that are also local. Um, I'm actually surprised by that, but that's my numbers. 84% Washington state. Mm. Um, yeah, that's good. And I've never met them in person. Again, the one, only one, the architect, and she, you know, whatever. She was a snoozer. She didn't. She didn't. She wasn't actually serious. So yep. a big waste of, big waste of a, a forty-five minute drive. You can go ten miles in Seattle. It'll take you forty-five minutes. It's ridiculous. You know, it's really interesting. James Fulton, who is one of our uh, members and and students and past customers here at WP Elevation. When I first met him, he was building websites for around about four thousand dollars, and he was driving all over town having meetings with clients, right? Which is what you do. Someone calls up and says, hey, we're a, we're a, um, this one example was a sporting management agency. We'd like to talk to you about a website. He called me up and he said, look, man, I've put my prices up. I'm now charging about 10 grand for a website. These guys want me to go and drive across town to their office and have a meeting with them and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I know how this plays out. What's your advice? And I said, uh, well, sell them a discovery session instead, right? So tell them that you're happy to come along and have a meeting with them, but it's going to cost. And he had to work through a, quite a few psychological barriers to get his head around that. And we worked back and forth on an email template that he eventually sent. And within half an hour, they'd agreed to it, right? And I think he charged like $497, whatever, for like a discovery workshop that lasted two or three hours. So he went along he used the discovery workbook that he got from us and he walked them through a process and they answered all the questions. And he knew that he was up against some other agencies who were competing for the job. And I said to him, that's fine. Don't even acknowledge that. Don't even talk about it. If they bring it up, just say, look, I'd rather not talk about what other people are doing. I'm focused on my business and I'm focused on helping you. So I'm, I don't really want to know what they're quoting you. Don't really want to know what their process is. Not interested. And he did that. He came back to the office. Within three or four days, they said, send us a proposal. We really like working with you. Um, they already had some skin in the game, so they'd already paid some money. So they were invested with him. Uh, he put a lot of effort into that workshop because he was getting paid for it. Ultimately, he got the job. Uh, and for him, it was like that was the when, the when the clouds parted and he saw the light and he said, no more. I will never leave the office again and drive to a client's office in the hope of getting a job because it's just a complete waste of time because you know at the end of it, they're gonna ask you for a proposal, then they're gonna get sticker shock on the price and you're never gonna hear from them again. And it's just a complete waste of everyone's time. And even if they pick your brain during that session, they won't do anything with the information you tell them because they haven't paid for it. And that's been a, a huge aha moment for me over the years is that people value and take action more if they pay for information rather than if you give it to them for free. 100%. Yeah. Um, Sean Michael Smith says, working from home with teenagers is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, thankfully, I don't have teenagers yet, so I'm not there. Um, and uh, Mitch Britt says, uh, Noah Britton knows I like to drive to clients. I think he might be calling me out. <laughs> It's funny because I was thinking about Mitch when, when right when we started talking about driving around because I'm like, oh man, I know Mitch is still doing that and he knows better, but that's okay. It's all right. You know what? You can drive to clients as long as you're getting paid for it. <laughs> I don't mind driving to strategy, clients as strategy, strategy sessions have changed my life. 
Yeah, yeah. Like totally. like being able to charging charging for my expertise, even though I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing I was doing before. And I will now I won't I won't write a proposal now until we have a verbal agreement on price. And this is a this is like a brand new thing. This is like six weeks old for me, but I will not write a proposal unless we have an agreement on price. And to get to that, what we need to happen is an actual strategy session. Now, Ahoy Digital is something totally different. It's a fixed product. I already know what they're getting. They know what they're getting. I literally change the name on the agreement and send it off. There, in that, in that in itself, having a product that I can yeah. talk to powerfully, the same product, I can talk to it over and over and over again in the same way, yeah. uh, really, it, it just positions it so much better and uh, not everybody fits for it. And I tell them, this may not fit for you. And if it doesn't, no worries. We can do a strategy workshop and uh, get you a custom solution. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. Hey, just a quick preview on what's coming up tomorrow. How can this spreadsheet help you run a successful business from home? I'm not going to tell you what the spreadsheet is. You're going to have to tune in to see it in action. I'm going to walk you through the spreadsheet. And then I'm also going to give away the spreadsheet to anyone who turns up to the live training. That is tomorrow same time as today. So if you're in Australia, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on the Eastern Seaboard. If you're in Los Angeles, it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon. If you're in New York or Eastern, it is 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, and if you want to get notified of when we are going live, just drop the word live into the comments here and we will ping you via Facebook Messenger uh, and let you know when we're going live. Um, Brett Drinkwater says, hey, can't tell you how much WP Elevation has helped uh, as well as gaining a business partner through the program. We're now kicking incredible goals with local councils who understand the investment approach. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Nancy Seeger says, only have one local client, but we'll try for a conference close to a client and meet them. Otherwise, I'll never meet them face to face. Try for a conference close to a client and meet them. Otherwise, I'll never meet them face to face. I think I understand that. Um, and uh, oh, Alex has got an interesting question. Do prospects that come through Thrive end up with Ahoy Digital or do they come through Ahoy Digital end up with Thrive Design? Is there any overlap? Yeah, nobody knows about Ahoy. Uh, it's really everything's all my marketing and positioning and content is Thrive. I will identify in, a, in that first triage call. I'll, I'll know within 15 minutes if they're, if they're a potential for Ahoy. And at that time, I'll send them. I'll just I'll show it to them like on the call. I say, hey, just go here, click on pricing. This is what it includes. You may be a good match for this. Uh, yeah, so it's always through Thrive. Awesome. Hey, uh, I'm conscious of everyone's time. We've been here for 52 minutes. This has been epic. Uh, Noah Britton, I want to thank you so much for your time and your generosity and sharing uh, your process with us. Uh, is there any parting thoughts for those watching uh, around mindset or tactics or practical stuff? Yeah, the biggest thing for me is just continuing through trying and just having an actual process, writing down a process and just trying it out and just taking imperfect action. I spent a lot of time in my life um, not taking action and just say it's got to be perfect. Like Screw all that. Just get it out there. And the second thing is um, have a community actually be involved in the community. I mean, Troy, you know my story. I've been in business 18 years and the first 15 and a half of those, I was the total lone wolf. I did not have a community. I had no kind of mastermind, no kind of um, comrades to work with. And obviously it made the biggest difference. I tripled my prices just by getting into a community and getting those distinctions. Be coachable, be open, take imperfect action and have a community around you. That's what made the biggest difference for me. Awesome. Um, what, there's one final question here that I do want to address. Paul Dillon has this question uh, for both of us. He says, what's your go-to line to get a client over the line when they can get a much cheaper, inferior website somewhere else? I'm going to try and bring this up on the broadcast. It's a long question, but check this out. Um, we know the value of our experience versus a cheaper cookie cutter provider, but what's your killer soundbite to drive the value home? So if Someone is, uh, if you're talking to someone and they're basically saying, well, I can get this done cheaper somewhere else. I, I've got a line uh, um, that I use quite often. It doesn't work all the time because some people just don't have the budget. But how do, you, how do you overcome that objection or how do you deal with that objection, Noah? I mean, it, it starts with them understanding that whatever they're asking for is just part of 
a much bigger picture. They may be looking for a website, but a website is just a tiny little piece of what it takes to be successful online. So if I position myself properly, um, that it doesn't really actually come up that much where somebody says, well, somebody else can do it cheaper. It's like, okay, well, what are they actually doing for you? I mean, I don't really want to, I don't know an answer to this, Troy. I think I have to write this down. Like, what is my go-to answer when somebody says I can get it done somewhere for cheaper? I mean, sometimes I could say, if you can get this done for cheaper and that's your number one goal, I suggest you go with them. I mean, yeah. I could just be as blunt as that yeah. um, with, with a client. I mean, they're looking for either price, quality, or time. Yeah. And if they can find somebody who can do it cheaper, you will always find somebody to do it cheaper. So right. those aren't the people that I compete against. So yeah. I, I wouldn't mind losing a client that yeah. needed that. That's right. My, my go-to line is something along the lines of, uh, we invest a lot of time and effort and energy and resources into projects that we work on. And we're really interested in working with clients who are prepared to invest in their projects and in their business. It sounds to me like price is the most important issue for you guys. So if you're not willing to make the investment in your business, then we're probably not the right team because we're not willing to make the investment in your project if you're not willing to match that investment. Can't argue with that, and uh, and, and then you're right, you, just be super and happy I'm sure to walk you just away. Go silent. Yeah, and then just go silent. Uh, Troy, I'm sure you totally just go silent. And you just go, ah, oh, let's sit in this awkwardness, and you just and you soak it up. I mean, I know that you do. Totally. Sharon Yates says, "My line, yeah, perfect. My line is, it's an investment in your business, and your business website is your front door. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Matt Olson's line is, let me know how that works out for you." <laughs> <laughs> I can get this done cheaper. Great. Let me know how that works out for you. Exactly. Um, hey, this has been super, super fun. Uh, Noah, thank you so much. Again, just want to preview uh, what's coming up tomorrow. How can this spreadsheet help you run a successful business from home? We're going live at the same time tomorrow. Just drop the word live in the comments and we will notify you when we're going live. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the spreadsheet and then we're actually going to give a copy of the spreadsheet away on the call. Uh, Noah Britton, my friend, thank you so much for being on the call here. Noah Britton from Thrive Digital and, uh, sorry, Thrive Design and Ahoy Digital in Seattle in Washington State. And uh, dude, look forward to keeping the conversation you, going in Mavericks, man. Yeah, awesome. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Unreal. Can't wait. Uh, thanks, Noah. And again, for those of you who want to join in the call tomorrow, just drop the word live in the comments here and we will notify you when we go live tomorrow. Uh, thanks for being a part of it. Share this with your friends, anyone who you think might be interested in it. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow and every day this week as we help you get clients from home and uh, become launch or relaunch your business from home. Awesome. See you then. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.